Hot Secretary Jared Perdue, who will provide an update on some of the roads. We have General John Haas, Florida National Guard, Senator Corey Simon, uh, Representative Schof, CFO Patronis, County Chairman Jamie English, and then behind we have some of our uh, Florida State Guard, including in that is one of our state reps from Miami, uh, Rep Fabricio, so I want to thank him for his service. I think as you see behind me, uh, there's a lot of debris, uh, a lot of trees knocked down. You see an eruption of, of power lines and trees going over power lines. So there's going to be a lot that's going to be required to be able to clean this up and to get everything back up and running again. We were not able to get down to Steen Hatchie. Uh, those roads are not passable yet. So as soon as that's the case, we're going to try to do it. Now, there are emergency personnel uh, that have headed down there, of course. And so we've got Florida National Guard, Fish and Wildlife, uh, all of our key people, as well as the local law enforcement uh, down there. I talked with uh, the sheriff about kind of some of the challenges. They did get a lot of water down there. There's no question. They have not received uh, any any call uh, regarding uh, a fatality as a result of that storm surge, but that's that's up to this point. I mean, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens as people go down there. So there's going to be a lot that's going to need to be done in that area. They got an awful lot of water. There are reports of people trying to loot uh, down in Steen Hatchie. And I've told all of our personnel at the state level, you know, you, you protect people's property and, and we are not going to tolerate any looting in the aftermath of a natural disaster. I mean, it's just ridiculous that you would try to do something like that on the heels of an almost category four hurricane hitting this community. I'd also just remind potential looters that people, you never know what you're walking into. People have a right to defend their property. Uh, this part of Florida, you got a lot of advocates and some proponents of the second amendment. And I've seen signs in different people's yards in the past after these disasters. And I would say it's probably here. You loot, we shoot. You never know what's behind that door. If you go break into somebody's house and you're trying to loot, uh, these are people that are going to be able to defend themselves and their families. So, so I would not do it. Uh, we are going to hold you accountable from a law enforcement perspective at a minimum. And it could even be worse than that depending on what's behind that door. So let's all band together and lift people up and not try to take advantage of a difficult situation. Uh, we're going to have a report on the, some of the roads with FDOT. Now, by and large, the, the roads are, I would say, uh, probably better than what I would have thought, just given the severity of the storm. Now, you see there's a lot here for sure. But we were able to get from Tallahassee down here without much of a problem. I know Jared and his team, they've already cleared a lot of roadways. There's going to be more that needs to be done. And we understand how important that is. And the same thing with the power restoration. Those, those efforts are ongoing. As soon as the storm passed where it was safe to go, these guys have been out working. Now, in a place like Taylor County, some of this stuff you could see. You just have to reconnect it. it. Probably won't be as difficult. There's other parts in Taylor County where the poles have been knocked down. Some of them may be snapped in half. That's going to require a little bit more extensive effort to be able to get that up and running. So all of that is going to be tackled and all that is going to be done. They want to get people hooked up uh, back online as quickly as possible. So I want to thank everybody for what they've been able to do to, to work, to help uh respond uh there's going to be more that that's done just in the in the emergency response with our first responders all through today and all through the night they're going to keep going as long as they're needed and then of course getting everybody back on their feet with uh, clearing this debris that's going to be a, a huge effort as well as the power restoration in the areas where you really had serious interruption to the overall power lines and power poles but thanks, everybody, for doing that. I appreciate all the linemen for what they've been able to do. Thanks to all the folks here locally who've worked really hard. This is the uh, – we haven't had a storm take this path at this level since the 1890s uh, to hit this part of Florida. So this is something that, that is a really big deal. And not that you ever want to do, but there's, there's parts of Florida that, that, have, that have had these things happen. And they, uh, they've built up infrastructure and in response to it. 
uh, well, this part of the state hasn't necessarily seen, seen a storm like this in quite some time. So that's just going to present challenges, but I appreciate everybody rallying around, uh, people stepping up, and really appreciate the resiliency that I'm seeing uh, throughout all these counties, particularly in the Big Bend region of Florida. Okay, we're going to hear from uh, Secretary Purdue, then we're going to hear from Sheriff Wayne Pageant. All right, thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your continued leadership throughout this event. Uh, FDOT is continuing to push crews inward uh, through the major arteries that are impacted by this storm. We have over 700 crew members um, and a lot of heavy equipment that are headed this way. You're going to begin seeing them working. Um, some of our priorities, one is to make sure all the bridges are safe and passable. We've inspected most of the bridges in this area at this point. There are still a few areas that are not accessible. Uh, the governor mentioned one of them in Steenhatchee and also State Road 24 going in to Cedar Key. Uh, you're going to see our cut and toss crews coming this way. They're pushing their way in right now. Uh, one of our main objectives is, is to get roads clear so that life safety mission can continue and also to support the power restoration. You notice there's a lot of trees vegetation on power lines. We want to help get that power restored as quickly as possible with, with our cut and toss crews. Um, one thing that, that we noticed as we were surveying the area, the traffic signals are definitely out of power here in this area. Uh, we have generators in route. We're going to be getting generators set up to get those signals powered up as quickly as possible. That's going to be a priority of ours so that the residents of this area can move around freely and safely. As we continue to work through this event, uh, road closure information is going to change and adjust as we get things cleared. I would encourage all of you to use Florida511.com. That is the most timely and accurate information for traffic and detours. And remember, if roads are flooded, please do not drive through them. You never know what's going on underneath the water. We want you to stay safe and get where you're going safely. Again, Governor DeSantis, thank you for your leadership. Yes, I want to thank, thank the governor for sending in the troops and helping us. He sent us National Guard. It's always have a great leader. And we want to thank everybody that's come forward to help us. We took a, a lick from almost a Cat 4 uh, hurricane. But I'll tell you, it, it's, it feels good to know that you can count on your people when you need them. And Taylor County, uh, we're going to make it. Just hang in there. If you don't have to go somewhere, don't go stay home. We've still got trees down, power lines down. And we just need you to stay home, stay put. Don't don't be out sightseeing and and uh, just causing a problem, getting in the way of, of our law enforcement and our cleanup troop and our cleanup crews. So thank you. Stay home, and we'll get through this. Just just be strong. Thank you. And we're going to continue to uh, respond as as local communities have more needs for support. The Division of Emergency Management for the State of Florida is ready to fulfill those requests. Uh, we appreciate everybody's hard work, and we're going to continue to work through this uh, over these next days, weeks. And, you know, a hurricane of this magnitude, you know, you're talking about months uh, that are going to go into some of the things when you start talking about rebuilding uh, and even beyond that. And so we understand that, and, and we're in it for the long haul. Okay, anyone have any questions? Well, if you are in distress, you can call 911 and there will be uh, rescue efforts that will commence. The storm is passed. Uh, the first responders are active. We have everybody from local law enforcement, local fire rescue. We have National Guard. We have fish and wildlife that can make waterborne rescues. Uh, and we have urban search and rescue teams. And so that's all there. And so if you are in harm's way or you are in peril, you call uh, emergency and there will be a response. Yes, we have to deal with uh, supporting the needs of the people who uh, are in harm's way or have uh, difficulties. And that has got to triumph over any type of short-term political calculation or any type of positioning. Uh, this is uh, the real deal. You have people's lives that, that have been at risk. We, we don't necessarily have any confirmed fatalities yet, but that very well may change. And then you have people whose livelihoods have been, have been turned upside down. And so they need support. So we're going to work together from local, uh, state, federal, uh, regardless of party, to be able to deliver results for the people in their time of need.
Well, the difference is, I think one difference between this and Ian is, is Ian was um, a ca hit, hit Category 5 going into Fort Myers, but then it went all the way up the interior of the state, all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean around Daytona Beach. So the sheer number of people who were without power uh, and suffered severe damage was probably as much that's ever happened in a hurricane in the history of the state of Florida. I think this storm, uh, the bands, there's obviously impacts far and wide, and we've seen tornado activity and things even hundreds of miles away. But I'd say the bulk of the storm going through north uh, in north central Florida, what you're going to see with all the wooded areas, you're going to see a lot more trees. Uh, you're going to see a lot more debris. There was debris, of course, for Hurricane Ian, but it was, I think, a more diverse array of debris. It wasn't all just trees. It was uh, different pieces of boats and different pieces of, of structures. And, and in some ways, that was a big challenge. I think this, we know uh, where the debris is. We know there's a lot of debris. And so we'll be working with the local communities to be able to do it. You know, some of these communities in this part of the state have never necessarily been hit with a major hurricane before. And I know there's some in like north central Florida, you know, they may not have a debris removal contract in place, whereas uh, a, a county like Lee down in southwest Florida, they are going to have that because they know that's something they got to deal with. So some of this stuff, they're going to probably need to lean on the state to be able to help. They're under-resourced counties, and we stand by ready to help them be able to get that done. So here, you know, so here, just there, there's going to be in times like these. There's always people that want to come up and try to scam you. Just um, be very weary of of what people are telling you right now. Uh, there are going to be crews to clear the roads. Uh, certainly, the public roads, you know, are going to be done. As you get into private debris removal, you know, it becomes a little bit trickier in terms of what is reimbursed and this and that. Uh, but but certainly on the right of ways. That, that is going to be taken care of, and it's uh, public right away. That's, that's kind of the core mission for debris removal. So, look, we'll, we'll see as the, as the day and, and tomorrow goes on in terms of uh, what, we, what we are looking at in terms of fatalities. Well, I can tell you with Hurricane Ian, as soon as that storm hit, uh, within an hour after it hitting, there were frantic phone calls uh, to, to 911 locally there of people that were literally drowning in their house. And it was something that you just, and, and when I was talking to the, the sheriff, I remember talking to the sheriff down in Lee County on the phone, just the feeling of dread that those phone calls represented, you knew that there was going to be a lot of problems. We have not seen that. Uh, in the same way on this storm. And I think part of it is that when you see storm surge of that nature, like we saw during Ian, I think a lot of people really heeded the warnings that their local officials uh, issued because, you know, you, you can't hide from the storm surge like in your house. Like if it comes and it's 10, 12 feet, uh, you are going to you're going to be in a world of hurt. And so it's not worth the risk. So I think a lot of people understood that. You got you to gotta run away from that uh, water, get out of the area, get to higher ground, and you can hunker down in a safe structure. And that could mean saving your life. So I think a lot of people understood that. I think a lot of them did that. We obviously had really significant storm surge in both Cedar Key and Stein, uh, Steen Hatchie. And, 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 and clearly, the, the storm surge there was enough to potentially be life-threatening if people didn't take proper precautions. But I, I think most of the people did, and I think they probably really protected themselves and their families as a result. So the, the guys behind me here for our state guard, uh, they came in and they're assisting with damage assessments. And that obviously is important information to be able to, to get back to the state. 
uh, so that we know what we need to do from a transportation perspective, uh, from a, a fish and wildlife perspective, anything in terms of uh, what needs to be done. So, so, the, so they've done a good job. And of course, we have uh, many hundreds of National Guard just right here in Taylor County. This is kind of the ground zero deployment for them. And if there's more that's needed, we'll be able to surge more accordingly. We've activated 5,500 members of the Florida National Guard. We also have some of our members of the State Guard. And then we have eight urban search and rescue teams. So we are well equipped uh, to be able uh, to respond to whatever comes down the pike today into tomorrow. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're hoping for the best. We're hoping that there's not going to be a need to use all those resources to effectuate rescue operations, uh, but we'd rather be safe uh, than sorry. Okay, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.